Hello, this is Sue from dragoncreations.co.uk and today I've got a new mould. It's a butterfly mould and it's at the widest point 20 centimetres. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a sun catcher. I couldn't think of the word then. Right, numbers. I've made up 130 grams, which is 68A and 62B. And I've decanted 45, 43, and then 43. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, pigment tint, purple, orange, and lake green. I'm not going to put alcohol um, ink into it because I want it to be colour fast. So, with my 45, let me just move this out of the way for two seconds. With my 45, let's try one drop of purple. So, I'll give it a good shake and then I will always wipe it off before I add it to anything so that I can count my drops so one drop I don't want this to be very dark at all I want it to be very transparent with a little bit of colour okay so I think I'll put another drop in So make sure you get it all off the sides as well. So it's a very nice light purple. I'm quite happy with that. Yep. Okay, and then I'm going to do orange in the 43. Let's put the lid back on the purple before I knock that over. All my inks and my tint and my pigment paste, I have ball bearings in. Um, just to make it easier to mix up. So let's put one in. I don't want any more. So it's a very pale, pale as can be orange. Just mix until you can see no streaks in it and make sure you get all the uh, tint off your stick and off the side of your cups. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. And then with my last 43, I'm going to do lake green. Start with worn again. There we 
Just take your time and make sure there are no streaks. Scrape your sticks and size your cups. Yeah, nice, very pale green. Right, okay, so that's my colours. And again, I always clean them off before I put them away. Now, I'm going to add a tiniest bit of bling. So, this is my silver holographic glitter, which I got off Amazon, and I want to put the tiniest amount in. That might do all three actually. Oh, uh, always the way, isn't it? Tiny amount. There. I just have to make sure I'm really mixing it in on the purple. And these um, sticks, are, uh, sticks, spoons I use for my mica powder as well, and they are short cocktail stirrers is what they come under on Amazon. All right, so let's just stir our glitter in. I just thought, because it's going to be a sun catcher, I just want a tiny bit of sparkle in it. Oh, that's all going to disappear. Plus, if you don't add too much, it should float as well. Sorry, I forgot to say, mine's a one-to-one -one resin. They're very sparkly. I've got glitter everywhere now. I'm just going to move my inks out of the way, my tints out of the way, and bring my mould back. Right, now I'm going to spray my mould with isopropyl alcohol. Give it a good spray because it has got um, raised pieces in it. And I'm not going to colour them in because I'm going to do something at the end with them. So that's why I'm going for straight colours to start off with. Right. Yeah. What I want to do, what the idea is, the idea here is, is I want to do the outer wings purple. Right. Just the tips of the wings. There's actually um, a groove in the mould where the outside of the wings are, so that's ideal. Right, let's do these and get rid of some. So make sure your resin is touching the outside of your mould and just take it slowly so you can control your pour. And 
as I say, they are grooves that you can pour up to. It's my first ever butterfly. I've never had a butterfly mould before. So just take your time. Keep your resin quite close to your mould so you can control it and it will help reduce bubbles. in there a tiny bit. Okay, let's just check both sides are even. I didn't want that bit in there. But I knew it was going to drip off. Oh, actually, that's fine. That's not his um, antennae. I thought I'd gone into his antennae then. Right, let's do the purple on this one. If you find this a little bit fiddly, you can always put it into a piping bag. Yeah, so that's where I want it to be. A little bit there. Okay, so I've got, I have got some left, but what I'll do is once all the colours are in, I will then go back on the outside again. So with my orange, I want to go into his main wings. Oh, the concentration is terrible. I mean, that's a second. Do the same on this side. Try to choose complementary colours. I also wanted it to be very pale and transparent, but you can go for any colours you want to.
I'm just carefully going into the veining of his wings or her wings the hair up. Oh. <laughs> Just spotted that before I was about to pull. Gotcha. Of course it'd be very summery for the weather we're having at the moment. There's another one. Bet you they're mosey hairs. Brand new mould. Okay. So again, I've still got some orange left, but that we'll pour that on top. It's, we're just putting it into the fine detail at the moment. So now let's go in with our green. I'll try and get his antenna first. And then his body. into his wings slightly. Take that into his wing that way as well. Again, start with his antenna. You can literally hear me concentrating, can't you? Have you joined our Facebook group? Dragon Creations Everything Resin. Join our Facebook group and put your photos up so that I can see what people are doing. It's ever so lonely this side of the camera. <laughs> right, okay. Now, at this stage, we can do a debubbly. I'll make sure that we've got no clinging bubbles in the uh, dips and bumps. So just bring them to the surface. Also putting glitter in should help this because glitter's spiky and helps pop bubbles. I'm just going to get a thinner, there we go. I've got a tiny, tiny end on this dotting tool just to get into the so I'm just bringing them to the surface and I'll make sure that we've got resin in the end of his antennae. No bubblies there.
and then his bum. Drop all the ends are nice. But because we sprayed it, it's not too bad actually. Bring them to the surface. That's the problem with moulds, they've got lots of detail in them. Even though you spray them, but he still likes to hide. Right, okay, let's go in. So the flame is just brushing over the top and keep it moving so you don't scorch your resin. stubborn ones. So I don't want to spray it with alcohol because I want the colours to stay separate because it can thin the resin. So I'd rather just try and bring them to the surface if I can. that one. Right, okay. Right. Okay, let's go back in with our colours again. So again, I'll go onto the wings first. And I'll pour it on the outside edge and that way it can find its way in. And these moulds are nowhere near full. I just wanted to um, make them quite thin and transparent. Okay, nice little drop I can get. There we 
uh, some ink now, look. And I just mix it in. Same with the orange. So I'll push that purple back slightly. Last little bit of orange. Well, things get a little bit stringy now. Let's just make sure we've got resin in his antennae. And then I shall just go in with my blue, my green, sorry. Again, just going over on top of what I've already poured, just to give it a little bit of accent of colour. Just to make sure I get it into his... Oh. I'm going to go on top of the mould just to make sure I do get it into his antenna. It's getting stringy. again. Come on, where are you? There you are. I think I'll put the rest of it in the big one. Um, right, 
I didn't need all that blue, so what I'm going to do is I have froggy moulds. I always have moulds to hand, so I'm going to put some into the froggies. So I didn't need to make up all that amount, so I could have made up probably 110. Or actually I could have put more in the purple. Yeah, so the same amount, but I would have uh, not made up so much blue. So instead of making 43 of blue, I probably would have made up 20. But it's the first time I've used these moulds, so... Another frog. We always have little moulds to hand for just such an occasion, especially when it's the first time I've used the mould. This is getting really stringy. Right, another frog. <laughs> just got enough, I think. So there's nothing left in there just I could scrape that out but I've only got four frogs so I'll clean them up in a minute right now let's go in for a good debubble yeah so in hindsight I would have only mixed up 20 of the green and uh, more purple Really good tea bubble. Then let's just make sure there's no stubborn ones. There are a few. So that's the wrong one again. So that's the problem with moulds like this. Not too many, which isn't bad. Got one in his antenna. Okay, so what I'll do is I will cover this and leave it to set and then once it's set I'll just show you what we can do with the other side. So I shall see you in the next part. Bye for now. Right, these are all nice and set now and what I'm going to do is I'll demold all of them. Oh, I like this mold. They just pop out. Oh, before I start, my froggies! They turned out really well. The other two are to one side. But look at my froggies! Such a pretty colour. So I'm glad I had a bit of overpour. <laughs> right. So, let's turn these over. They've got um, lines in them. So, let me find something white. What have I got that's white? Oh, it's kitchen roll. Actually, the back of, back of the mould. That's better. Right, can you see the lines? And what we're going to do is we're going to colour them in. But I'm only going to do it on a small one for the video because it will take me so long. 
but I will do them all exactly the same. So let me put on some kitchen rolls so you can see what I'm doing. Right, and I'm going to colour them in with my acrylic multi-surface paint pens. Um, these are metallic ones by Artistro and I also have um, just plain ones again by Artistro and they're called paint pens but they are brilliant for drawing on resin that's what I use all the time and the colours I have chosen are the metallic purple, metallic blue, metallic copper and the metallic silver and in the metallic pack you get amber, radiant red, fuchsia, violet, malibu blue, forest green, lime green, amber brown, gold, silver, white and gunmetal. So there's quite a selection in there I mean, last for ages. And the other pack again is 12 and you get quite a selection in there and they last so long. I've had this pack oh, for ages. So what I thought we could do is with the blue, I'm going to colour his, make sure I've got him the right way round. There's a line in there, so I'm going to colour that bit in. And if you find your pen doesn't actually fit, just hold it there and press down and let the paint flow in. So just take your time, get it into his body. So I'll put it into his body and then he's got two little eyes. I'll put it down here. And the excess I will clean off eventually. So and then he's got his tail, so I'll cut blue in his tail there. And his tail there. So it's going to take a little while, just be patient and let the paint fall into the groove. And as I say, we are going to clean it up afterwards, so don't worry about any overflow. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for his wings. But in, I'm going to go orange, um, I'll probably put a little bit of blue in there. And also on the wings there are little um, uh, divots, I don't know what to call them. And I'm going to put them into the purple. So basically where, the pur where we put the purple is where I'm going to put purple. And where the orange is, I'm going to put the coppery orange. And we are going to top coat these. So the paint will stay put. I mean, you don't have to top coat these because this paint is brilliant. Once it's on, it stays there for ages. You have to scratch it off. But you can get it off with alcohol um, before it's set. So just find all your dots and things and go into them. It's hard to see when I'm at this angle. There we go. Detailed. So 
So I'll right, we'll do that. I'll carry on doing that in the purple. And then with his wings, the copper shall go into the inner part of his wings. Because I'm going to do his actual out. I'll show you that bit now. The actual outside of his wings in silver. Just the out outside bit. I can get my pen in there. <laughs> There we go. As I say, if the pens don't fit, just wait for it to fall. Keep pushing down and the paint will fall into the gap eventually. So just take your time. And the other thing is, if you're still not happy and you're getting frustrated, you can always use a dotting tool on the fix. Let me find one that I've got an extra, extra small one. Yes, there we go. So you can always use a dotting tool to move your paint around. So, but just be patient. So I'm going to go into his wings on the outside and then any overflow just wipe it off let's put some alcohol on that isopropyl alcohol and then just it comes off so easily because it's not entirely set or a baby wipe the baby wipe will take it off as well while it's not set and then we shall have all detailed in his uh, wings so I shall go and do that and then come back and we shall I shall show you what's happened to him and we shall do a top coat so it's gonna take me a little, little while but I'm just gonna relax and do some painting so bye for now right these are all nice and dry and I've cleaned them up and I also put some liquid latex on the back of them to stop drip, drips going because we're going to flood coat these um, you could put tape around the edges it's just so that the drips don't catch because we're going to do the other side as well to totally dome them so just I don't know what whatever you feel happy using to stop catching drips masking tape even cellar tape just make sure you get all the edges so that you don't get any doming drips so I've got them on my cups. I've made up 50 grams, which is 26A and 24B, and I'm going to flood coat them. And by that, I mean I am going to let it drip over the sides. But first of all, we've got to get into the... I'm just going to give them a quick spritz. Not too much because we don't want the uh, acrylics to lift at all. So just a quick spritz. Okay, so go into your details first. It's going to be a thin coat, but we want to make sure it gets fully covered. So when you put them on something, uh, make sure they're level, so that your resin just doesn't pour off. This tail's a little bit tricky, so I'll go down the centre, and then it can find its way off the sides. You can always stand these on some moulds and catch your resin and then make something out of the clear resin. But I'm hoping I won't have too much overflow. I take my time and get all my little bits filled. So basically I'm just pouring into the uh, 
happen on the wings first and because resin is self leveling it should level itself out All right, I'll let him do his thing on that wing. If you're not confident doing um, a delicate blood coat, you can just pour it on. But it is a waste of resin, so I like to try and control it. It takes a little bit of time, but it is worth it. You don't always. You don't have to put a top coat on. I just want to make these rounded off because they're going to be a present for somebody. So I'm making them a little bit extra special. Okay, let's leave him to settle and we'll go on to this one. Do the same, go into his detail first. And then it should find its way to the edge. Oh, Try to drip it in his bum but I missed. Just try and get it in all the little bits of detail. Don't forget his eyes. Right. So I've got a little bit left. Now we can see where we need the bits that haven't flowed over yet. We do want it to flow over if we can. And the other thing you can do is encourage it to break the surface tension. Just be careful that you don't get any uh, fish eyes, divots in the resin, which you might have to keep looking at it from different angles to make sure that you haven't got any. If these are level, which I hope they, they are, they, when I put the level on them, they were level. So it depends if the mould twisted or not. So let's give a quick look, see if I can see anything. No, it seems alright at the moment. It doesn't seem to want to flow over, which isn't a problem. I'd like it to, but it doesn't want to. It's holding its surface tension.
once I've got this all up to the edge with the, my remainder I'll probably pour that in the middle and then let it flow Oops, don't knock him off So let's do his antennae. And that will just drip off nicely. And if you're worried about any of the bits, let me get something to show you, something pointy. Any of the bits like in here, where drips might be collecting, just get something and break the tension. And that way they shouldn't collect. You might have to go back and do this a couple of times just to break that surface tension. And because we've put a barrier underneath, when we peel our barrier off, whatever it may be, it should take the big drips that catch in those bits. Right now, did I do his antennae? I haven't done his antennae. Oh, I've got a bit on his bum as well. This is what I mean, you have to move around and see in the light the bits that you've missed. So just take your time. I don't want you touching though. There we go. And again, just break the bits where the tension gathers. I might do oh, I might do something a little bit radical because gathering in the bottom of those cups and I don't want that. I didn't think of that, did I? So let's just turn them over. There, room to drip now. That's what I wanted. Because it will drip, once you've broken the tension, it will drip. It was just gathering in the bottom of those cups. So he's got this one's got a puddle underneath him, which is good. Right, so I've got a tiny, tiny bit left. I'm just going to check their levels. Well, they're really nice and round now, so I'm going to put it on the big one. Some in the middle of his wing. I've made it up, so I might as well use it all up. And I know I'm wasting resin, but I don't mind if I'm doing a flood coat and I'm doing it for something something special. I mean, the resin that's gathered underneath, once it's set, I can always pick it off and put it inside something else because it's clear. So if I'm doing a clear project, I can always put it inside that because it will disappear. But you have to make sure your mat is clean first when you do a flood coat if you're going to use the resin um, that falls off. Okay, I'm a little bit sticky now. So, I've got a few bubbles. 
and make sure and carry them out of the wings. And this is just a um, micro brush that I've cut the end off. So without scratching the paint, just encourage those bubbles to the surface. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the back. Once this is set, I'll peel off the latex and then I'll put latex on the front but I won't flood coat them because there will be a little bit of a lip on the back from when we didn't fill the moulds up totally so I will pour up to that lip There's a dip in his wing there, just break that tension in there. Getting all the bubbles out, bringing them to the surface. Nice. Just while it's dripping, keep breaking that tension. This is the one time I'm going to use my blowtorch. This is my little mini blowtorch. I don't use it on my moulds. But because we haven't got any moulds, I'm not going to put it too close and I'm going to keep it moving. Because I don't want to scorch the resin. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'll do it with this hand. Got carried away. No, I'm gonna have to do it this way.
No, that's a bubble, it's actually in there. Couple there. Okay, so I'll just keep breaking the tension until he stops dripping. He will get to a stage where he'll stop. I just don't want him to gather all in one area. Now I did spot a tiny bit that I'd missed. Where was it? It's not there. Where was it? It's a tiny, tiny bit that... No? Oh, how peculiar. I'm sure I caught the light. There it is. It hadn't quite gone up to the edge. So keep moving round. And the other way you can do it is... Um, Get a torch and just go around all your edges just to make sure that there's uh, resin touching the edges. You'll be able to see it because it won't be the uh, the resin we've just put on is really, really shiny. So if you've missed anywhere, you will be able to see it. Little bit of my same tonight. Okay, just a little bit off there. I mean, you don't have to do this at all. As I say, I'm only going to make these extra special because they're going to be a present. Plus, I haven't done a, a proper flood coat for ages. So it's nice to practice things. I've done top coats, but not a proper flood flood coat. So I just thought I'd share with you how I do it. It's a little bit fiddly, but it is worth the end result. And I do like a challenge. So, okay, I will keep an eye on these for the next half hour or so. Just breaking the surface tension in those little bits to make sure that it doesn't gather. And then I shall cover them, let them set. And then I'll show you peeling off the latex because that bit's fun. And then I'll repaint them with the latex on this side and um, I'll show you coating the other side as well. So I shall see you when it's all set and I can peel off the latex. Bye for now. Right, these are all set now so it's time to get the latex off. And I've put my gloves on because it helps. Just look at that. Just peels off. And if you do have any stubborn bits, you can always gently use a craft knife. Look at that, it's so satisfying. It's hard to get my nail underneath that with my gloves on. My friend Tenway, come on. A little bit of uh, it's on top of the latex. I just want to encourage it. 
I'm going to slice my finger off there, so let's do it this way. Let's put the latex there. So I can cut into it if I need to. There we go. So that's just going to come off. So whatever you use to put a barrier down, it should just come off really easily. It's only because I had some latex left over from making moulds. Now, in there are where we collected the bubbles. So if you're not happy with that, you can always just, with your craft knife, take your time and just gently slice through. Just to take that little tiny piece out. There we go. So that was just to take that little tiny piece out there. And that's all that I've gathered. So I shall do, hang on a minute, I've just undone my craft knife. There we go. I shall do the same on this side. Just get in there between his wing and his body. Just to encourage it. And then I should be able to just poke it out. Oops. Carefully. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Tiny little piece. And then we have a butterfly. So I'm happy with that one. All of his latex is off. Let's do the same with the little one. So much easier with gloves on to get the latex off. And again, he's got a little bit of gathering, only a tiny amount. I could get my deburring tool, but I don't think I'd get it in here actually, so it's probably easy to do with a craft knife, just to take that little tiny piece out. There we go, same on this one. Oh, this one's a bit stubborn. Do it from this angle. Just want to scoop you out. There, got you. All that trouble. Oh, and some latex there, actually. And he's got a tiny bit between his, his antenna at the top. Oh, <laughs> that flicked. With that one. Bring this one there. Keep on doing my knife. So it was just the same place in the small small ones. There you go. That gathered a little bit extra. You just need to gently get your knife in there and get it out. There we go. Right, now. Oh, that's 
good the latex picks up those little pieces right when we made these um, and we back them if you run your finger along the piece that we didn't put the um, top coat on you'll feel there's a little lip and that lip is where we're going to pour up to so I'm not going to put any latex on this side because I'm just going to pour up to that lip and the surface tension should keep it there so I'm going to go mix up some resin I will mix up um, I'm only going to mix up 40 grams because I don't want it to go over so 40 grams should be enough plus there's no um, pattern because these are flat on the back 40 grams might be too much but I'll make up 40 grams so I shall see you in a minute right I'm back I've made up 40 grams which is 21 a 19 B and before I start oh and I've added two drops of the purple pigment tint only because I think we've lost the purple in the wings quite a bit and what I'm going to do is I won't show you this bit on camera but when this is all nice and dry I'm going to drill a hole in the wing there and hole in the wing there and one there and one there and I'm gonna put chain on and I'm gonna hang hang them from chains now you can get the chain off of Amazon on a reel it's really really cheap and um, when I used to make jewelry when I first started ages ago everybody said to me make jewelry and I got so bored with it that I had some chain left over so I'm gonna hang these from chain right so I'm just gonna take the two little ones off for the moment so we can concentrate on the big one let's move him where it's easy now I have got a silicon paintbrush but you can do this with um, a micro brush the end of a micro brush cut off so I ever so gently I'm just gonna go up now I haven't sprayed this with alcohol because I don't want this to go the alcohol could break the surface tension and I don't want that because I'm just gonna go up to the edge as I say, you should be able to run your finger over it and feel it, so you will know where you're going to. So I'm going to take my time doing this. And it's going to be a little bit tricky in his antennae because they're dipped. So get a small amount on your stick. Oh, see, wasn't watching, was I? Quickly, just get that off. So let's take all of that off there. Just have a small bit on the end. I can do it again. I have to come back and wipe that off. So be careful with his antennae because they have got a really deep dip in them and you don't want to break the surface tension if you do just quickly wipe it off so have a bit of kitchen roll or something handy two seconds I'm just gonna, gonna bring it closer to me to make sure I get in there properly there let's get rid of that bit it's got all stuff on it so I reuse my pieces all over and over again. Right, so I've done his antennae. I'm just going to make sure I didn't catch any with the other, on the other one with the kitchen roll. So because it's a little bit tricky at the top of his head, I think I'll go in with the micro stick. There. Let's put that on there. Let's go back to his wings now. So just go up to the edge, you'll be able to feel it and see it. And as I say, if you spray alcohol on it on this, it will break it could you could possibly end up with a like a little spritz on the edge and it could break your surface tension. 
and then all the work we've done on the other side could end, end up with a drip and that's not what we want and that's why I'm not pouring in the middle because I just literally want it to go up to the edge and make sure it's going to stay there and not go over and then once I've gone all the way round I shall fill his middle in, or her middle. It's a girl, it's a girl. So those two drops of purple that I added, you can barely see them, but I just thought it might add a little bit more colour because that clear seems to have taken most of the colour out. So just be patient and paint your resin on, basically. Just make sure you've got no divots in your resin when it's near the wings. So I'll come back and finish this wing off. difficult to do it at an angle so that you can see so this is what people call top coating when we did it the other way and we just literally poured it on and allowed it to go over the side so far as I know, that's called flood coating, and this is top coating, where you literally just go up to the the edge, the raised edge. That's as so far as I know. I mean, I, I don't know technical terms about resin, because I'm self-taught. But I've picked up a few words here and there. And once this is dry, if you do find that you have got some fish eyes or divots in it, you can either go in with a tiny amount of resin, or you can even go in with some UV resin. And you only need a tiny, tiny amount to fill. Well, it depends how big the hole is, but you should only need a tiny, tiny amount. I'm just going to be careful on his bum because I don't want to him to flood over like his antenna did but I do want it to go right to the end right so that's his wings done now again I'm not going to pour I'm just going to oh, keep knocking it I'm just going to do it with my stick I'll fill the rest of him in. Him, her, it, them, sorry. I don't know why I call it him. And because resin is self-leveling, it shouldn't go over because we're putting a very thin coat on. Now I can feel this is bowed slightly when it was drying so there's a little rays there so I've got to keep an eye on there because that's where um, I might end up with some divots so I might have to keep coming back 
and checking that bit because the resin is going to want to pour off there because it's slightly raised. So be aware that your finished piece might not be totally flat. It was all right when we were flood coating it, but when we're doing this bit, because we're putting a thin amount on, see, it's not, because it's slightly raised there, it wants to flow over it rather than stick to it. So just be aware that if you've got any raised pieces, you might have to keep going back and dabbing it. I missed a bit. <laughs> I've probably made up way too much resin looking at this actually which is my fault because I didn't know how much I'd need Let me just give this a look. I think I'm pretty much there. So have a look from every angle. So you can come away from the wing slightly there. Or I miss that bit of a wing. Have a really good look around to make sure you've got everywhere. And where you've got, where it's raised. Because you'll be able to feel it as you're doing it. There. Oh, hello, Mo. I didn't shut the door, did I? Okie dokie. Right, now the tricky bit. I want to move him over there. Her. Over there. Okay, let's move on to this one. So I'm going to do exactly the same, but I think this time I'm really going to scrape it and only have it on one side of the stick because it's so small. And with the antennas, I am definitely going in with a micro micro stick this time so I've only got a tiny amount on there and I'm just going to drag it along and then once I've done this to all of them I'll get my little blowtorch out and I shall just give them a quick blast Make sure that we haven't got any bubbles. It's actually easier on the smaller ones because the lip is a little bit higher. But it's trickier because they're moving.
I'm just going to put some of this in his bum or her bum. easier with the stick to go right up to the edge of the smaller ones. See, I'm learning. So just drag drag your stick just to the edge so it will you'll feel the edge and that's as far as you want it to go. Oops, stuck my finger in the big one. So I'll put some around the edge, like that, and then I shall move it with this little one, because it's a little bit easier, because it being so small. So I'm just encouraging it right to the edge, just to touch the edge. So I'm literally scraping the edge with my uh, micro brush. So I'm putting the resin on the edge. I'll have to turn you around. It'll be easier for me. So the best way I can describe it is: imagine that the edge of the cup is the edge of the piece. I'm scraping it. So that edge there has got a ton. Okay, let's scrape both sides first before I do that, shall we not? So that cup edge has got a tiny, tiny bit of resin on it, and the rest of the resin is inside, and that's what we're doing. And keep your stick flat, don't drag it down because that might break the surface tension and we don't want drips, we just want it to go up to that line nicely and stay there. And once you've done the edge you can fill the rest in. And again, move round in the light to make sure that you've got everywhere covered. I shall do exactly the same with this one. That's the problem. I will go back and I will fiddle. Start on the edge of this one. Yeah, this is going to be too much resin. <laughs> so I made up 40 and I reckon I'm going to have 20 left by the time I've done this one. So I shall find a mould to put it in. So I'd say for this bit you only need 20. Let's put 
Mini Sun di sana. Keeps moving. Let's see if this deviates slightly. There we go. Do your bum. Ah, got my finger in it. <laughs> okay, let's fill that wing in. And then I can turn it around and do the other side. I'm just laying it, laying it on, but I'm not laying it near the edge because I will then pull it to the edge with my stick. So I'm going to hold on to it this time. And you can take your time doing this. I'm trying to rush through it a little bit so the video is not too long. And as I said, I will drill holes and put some jump rings in and put some chain uh, probably in his middle of his head there on the smaller ones and on the full places I showed you on the wings on the big one and then I shall show you the finished piece I won't show you the drilling and everything because you can do whatever you want with them I'm just gonna that's how I'm going to hang them So that was way too much resin. What do you think? Another frog? I'm going to go off back around going like that. There. Okay, so the big one is quite happy. I mean, I will go around and inspect all the edges on these to make sure that they're all nicely covered. And then I will find a mould to put my last bit in. So, then I will leave, cover these, leave them to dry, put my chains on, and it will be this demold. So I shall see you in the last bit. Bye for now. 
Well, here it is, all finished. And what I've done is I've put some little jump rings on the little ones between their eyes and I sealed them in with UV. I put the rings in, put the clasp bit of the ring um, in the resin and then poked the hole with UV and sealed them in so they don't they're not they're not going to move and I did exactly the same with the big ones so there's four on the big wings and two on the little ones and oops, put it underneath no I've got it twisted hang on a minute there and I also put a um, keyring clasp at the top so that it can be hung so here we go it's going to spin because I've just laid it down this is a little bit tricky to do there so what do you think So I'll finish butterfly. There. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. It's very satisfying when a project comes together and you you think, yeah, I like that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.